and we are live. I'm Ronnie Harris of the Limitless Channel, and I'm joined by Jason Laufenberg of Awake Souls. How's everyone doing? How you doing, Jay? I'm doing well. I'm pumped up for this Friday night. All juiced up. Um, hello to everyone in the chat. Brother, brother, what uh, what do we have to go through tonight? Well, we <clears throat> we definitely have some scriptures to look at. Uh, <clears throat> isn't it the fast that I've chosen to break the chains of the wickedness, to unite the cords of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free, and to tear off every yoke? So that is the message that we're bringing forth tonight, shattering all of Satan's attacks, smashing the teeth of he that roars around like a lion waiting to devour. We are going <clears> to <throat> obliterate the dietary laws. We're going to obliterate the Sabbath keeping and all of that. We're going to show you exactly what the commandments are, what they're set out to say, and how that we should follow them exactly the way that it was prescribed by the anointed one of the Most High. He told us the way. We're going to go through that, the second part. You've got some stuff. So we've been following this channel. We've brought him up a few times, Nick Vanderlane. And uh, so why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what's going on on that situation? Yeah, so we're going to be putting Judaizing to, to bed for Christians. Right? So this is, it's been a tough topic. A lot of Christians get, get sucked into the Judaizers message because they want to be devout. They want to be faithful. They want to be good servants. And so Judaizers prey upon that and try to suck people into Judaism, which is the keeping of the law that was done, what fulfilled, fulfilled by Yahushai. So we're going to be showing actual proof of the fulfillment. We're going to be going through the scriptures, making it super obvious that that was fulfilled. So we want, like Ronnie said, this is about freeing the yokes from you know people thinking that they're under under the law we want to make break it in the chains easy. just just obliterate them you see but, but gate uh, iron gate you just rip that son of a gun out and tell the people come this way right <laughs> exactly so there's a whole bunch of that stuff and you mentioned yeah nick vanderlane we're going to be going through this this has all really happened as a result of comments that he's been leaving on videos so we have a whole bunch of comments to go through and it's it's sort of come to a, a head we invited him to to join us tonight and be a part of this conversation you'll see the invitation as we go through the comments mm -hmm. but um i don't know it was last minute we didn't give him a whole bunch of of time to prepare for something so like i like i told him there's going to be plenty of opportunity to go through this as much as is necessary <clears throat> Yeah. And so um, I do hope to get Nick on. I'm, I'm, there's no ill will here. No. Um, just... we're, we're doing the watch. We say we do. Our, our channels are, are living proof of it. If you look at Ronnie's had to put his videos on private because of two community guideline strikes. But I, I went through that earlier. And now I'm getting my videos back up. But the track record is there. The timestamps are there as far as being watchmen calling people out and, and that is going to be a part of the, the common thread that we're going through along yeah. with just judaizing in general there's going to be stuff regarding blessings with um ephraimites and and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. that we want to go through and and start laying straight and there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of material to go through well, yeah, the blessings, all the different things that, you know, how the scriptures have been written, what's going on. You know, Nick, Nick isn't the only one that does this, that preys upon people that find the, the spirit through the scriptures and that, they, oh, well, you know, you should be keeping the Sabbath if you truly love the father. And then you start doing that. And then they say, oh, well, you should be, you know, you can't eat shellfish. Right. And then they, they take that a little bit more. And then the, the next thing, you know, you're, de you're denying the the living anointed son of the father like the the boss of all the bosses so you know it's such a slippery slope that you can fall down with this road and that's why tonight i hope we're able to just bust it wide open i would completely i put out right now to any other theologian biblical scholar to anybody that tunes in tonight my invitation is out to you in front of all of heaven and all of earth 
that when I'm finished tonight, if you don't see the true fulfillment with how the scriptures were written in three different sections with different rules as we move forward, if you can't see the simplicity of how salvation is won, if you can't see any of what we're going to go through tonight, you absolutely have no eyes for any of the truth because this is such a simple thing. These things are like, so simple that a three-year-old, literally, if you like talk to them a few times, they should be able to answer back these things that we're going to be showing. It's so simple. Yet it can be taken by certain people and they can twist it, flip it upside down into the point where they're telling you, if you don't boil your meat, you're blaspheming. You're a sinner. This is how things can get flipped around and you end up worshiping the commandments of man and you nullify the commandments of the father. This is something that we all need to be super, super careful with, right? And I'm not telling people that they've got to like do this thing and shake these things and say, no, it's all about your heart. Your heart's condition is everything. It's everything. Everything that you're made up of, every choice you make, every word you speak is your heart condition. This is what matters. So I am probably going to get a little bit triggered tonight because I'm, I'm really tired of, it's been 2000 years since the boss came here, told us what to do. And we still have people trying to go behind his back to someone that's lesser and that my my mission tonight is just to show everybody exactly the way that we were commanded and it's so simple so that you know that's my point yeah so we've got that and um that we've with going through this comment and and talking about the judaizing and and all this kind of stuff there's um there's the possibility that when we get into some of the retorts that that Nick Vanderlane has given back to to me and us, that as we go through this, there's things that could be fulfilled tonight. That uh, it'll be interesting to see if if people catch and and pick up on this. It's um, I think I think tonight the material that we're going through is going to be really special and and something that we look back on, going whoa that. Uh, that was really something that we went through that then and well like so, it could actually be a timestamp that we come back to as a reference point right yeah i like the re re reference point uh, my reference point is you know i just want to put this out there right now i repent daily i ask for forgiveness and i want to send my heartfelt brotherly ploy to nick vanderlane before we get started and that you know, he repent of the Judaizing spirit, that the mm -hmm. legions or whatever it is that they be cast out of him in the name of Yahawashai. And I hope that he continues to seek truth and understands that what we're going to show tonight is something that he might want to listen to. We're not going to be talking specifically about six fundamental truths, even though you will touch upon them throughout the evening. Tonight is about biblical doctrine, how we put line upon line, scripture upon scripture, so we can stand faithful, watching and prepared. So this is what my goal is. I hope Nick repents and that those demons are cast out of him. Whatever it is that's afflicting him, in the name of Yahushai. All right. So we got a fair amount of content to get through. And um, so it's going to be sort of dominant in this, this comment section type material that we'll be going through. There's a video of Nick's that he references about the Ezekiel 33 Watchmen that we need to cover some of that content. And then all the stuff that Ronnie was talking about, the actual the scriptures that throw off the chains of the yoke of the law. And um, that's that's going to be mammoth. So we've got a lot to get going on. Should, uh, should I start setting up a screen share? Yeah, I definitely think we should. And, you know, just to take this last moment, just to say thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone that shared this stream. And thank you everyone that's leaving your comments and participating in this because you're showing the creator your heart's condition by being involved. That's the most important thing that Jason and I always tell people, do something, get involved. That's the most important thing. So thank you guys for being here and anyone that shared it. And from the future, thank you guys for checking this out too. You should have been here live though. Take the screen share away. All right. Let's fire this thing up. Room, room. All right. So this, this is a comment. I'll, I'll make it bigger. 
Let's see what that was. This. No, let's make this bigger. I want people to be able uh, to After read you this. size it, I'm going to size it too. Make sure that it's good. So you're going into comments? Comments. Okay, let me see because it's kind of small on my end, but I'll get it larger. So you're going to stay right, that so, size? Yeah, I, I can do it like that. It should make it big enough for you to place it. I just want to show people what video this is on. This is on Leland Jones Exposed. Learn from the Beaver drum and bass remix. And, and this really was, um, it was a pretty serious mockery of Leland because he, he said that Sabbaths are Saturdays because of the beavers. And in the same, in his same video, he said the month is either 29 or 30 days long. So when a person understands that, uh, seven times four weeks is 28 days, but there's either 29 or 30, then you know that the next month, uh, it has to change a named day of the week. You know that. So on that video, all of a sudden we started getting comments from Nick Vanderlane. And um, I don't know, maybe before I get into the comments, I should do just a little bit of backgroundy stuff about Nick. He, um, if, if you look up Nick on Google, right away you see that he was a basketball player. He's got his own Wikipedia. And um, yeah, he got made famous in a, in a countdown list of, of like bigger po biggest posterizing slam dunks. But um, we haven't had any, any issues with with Nick until these, these comments started coming along. Where is his channel I'm looking for? All right, so a little background on Nick. If you go to the about on his channel, he says, hi, my name is Nicholas James Vanderlyn. I was born in Long Beach, California, and I'm 41 years old. After my startup popped and dropped, I suspended retail operations, shipped all open orders, put all my kids' stuff into a storage pod in Las Vegas, and went on a three-week European vacation with my wife and five kids. I was going to figure out what was next in life when we got back. We left the USA on September 24th, 2017, so the day after the revelation 12 sign in 2017 they left the usa which turned out to be he says the real day of the revelation 12 sign my first video i published in october 2017 i thought i figured out daniel's 70th week timeline i was 99 percent sure of myself and it was 100 percent pride i humbled myself big time before my l and he reminded me this work can only be done by my spirit says yhwh of hosts since then, he has taught me marvelous things. Hallelujah. My three-week trip turned into a journey and a mission. I arrived in Jerusalem on November 19th, 2017, and I officially started my message of the Ten Commandments and the seven-day Sabbath on my March 20th, 2018 Spring Equinox video. So this right here is uh, quite the statement that... His, his message, his ministry is the Ten Commandments and the seven-day Sabbath. He started that on the spring equinox. And we are equinox watchers. We, we've been showing people how to use sundials and all that kind of stuff. Um, he's had a fair amount of views. He's got 1.2 million views on the channel. He really started a long time ago in 2017. He, his videos... I want to sort of do a brief run through because um, you're going to see you're going to see the type of content that Nick does. So there's his first video. His next video is a an equinox, spring equinox with a sundial. It's a really nice looking sundial, right? This is sure we're, is. In, we're into that kind of stuff because we can tell you what latitude, what longitude you're at. And uh, what day of the year we can show you where the fourth gate of 
Enoch is and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, his third video is biblical proof the day starts at sunrise. So he did not waste any time coming out as a dawn to dawner. And, and to that, I, I do say that, Nick, we have to have this discussion. We're going to go through um, Adam Fink's video on is it either the evening or, or the morning? How is the day kept? And that video makes it super clear that Passover, Passover, the, the thing that we're talking about right now, debunks the possibility of it being morning to morning. It literally it just throws it right out the door. So that's a, that's a bad stance to be sitting on right there, going morning to morning. Right here, he's, he's a calendar guy, 100% proof all lunar month calendars are false. Well, then how does he find Passover? The Passover can only be found with the moon. Only. So he promotes the Enoch calendar, which was a strictly solar calendar. It did not use the moon for reckoning whatsoever. It's just a pure solar calendar. But obviously, the festivals were set to the new Hebrew calendar that went by the moon. Because there was new moons, new moon sightings, right? And that's all of that. It's So he's he finds himself on the wrong position just over and over and over. But he is a guy that talks about the two witnesses a whole bunch. He says, confirmed that it was Daniel and John. This is just another one of those pure cuckoo way out there things. It's Elijah and Moses. They were at the transfiguration. And we're also going to show that you're this super Elijah watchman. How is it that you are not looking for Elijah to be one of the two witnesses? And you say that they're Daniel and John. Nobody. You're just way out there. So That's what he says, yeah. <laughs> so he... um. He, he does have some call out, like, so he says he's a watchman. So he's called out Sandy Armstrong, who we have, Scotty Clark, who we didn't really have to say much. He just disappeared. Um, let's see here. He called out Sandy Armstrong again. Now, this is interesting. He actually, because... He's this guy that just ends up being able to be in Jerusalem. He just able to pack up and from California. Now he's a Jerusalem guy. He says the two witnesses will die here in Jerusalem. And we found that sort of interesting to check out. Um, but then, yeah, so it's Elijah. We're going to get to a whole here. Here's the, you have to boil all your meat video. Uh, Christian ignorance, the sin of eating blood. If you don't boil your meat, that's going to be coming up. So here's the thing. He is he is a Freemason, New World Order, AE map modeler. Right? This is the second truth that is, is in clear, clear, clear violation of it. So Leland Jones, he's called out. He actually, he actually paints Leland Jones as, as quite a whack job. He's got this video about how to remove blood from meat. It's all, you have to boil your meat or you're a sinner. Here's, here's him exposing Leland Jones and uh, demonic mysticism. That's sort of going to come into play in the comments coming forward. So this is to give you an idea. He called out Justin Best like we have. And we'll be getting up to Elijah and all that. So I just wanted to give people an overview of who it is that we're talking about right now. That's Nick's not Nick Vanderlane and his content. Now let's get into the comments. So under that video, learn from the beaver. Nick says, good catch. I caught the same thing that Leland is adding a gate to Enoch, blatantly adding to the text his idea. Leland is a false apostle, traveling messenger of Revelation 2-2, 
I know that you cannot tolerate those who are evil, and you have tested and exposed as liars those who falsely claim to be apostles. So then Leland Jones showed up on a, on a backup account here, and he said, I forgive you to Nick. And so I took the opportunity to say, I understand that you two met in Israel. I hope you can both get over your discrepancies and stand with truth. Nick responds, Jason, there appears to be a YouTube glitch as my reply to Leland keeps disappearing and I keep reposting it. Maybe it is getting identified as spam and you have to go into YouTube studio and approve the comment because of all the times I've reposted it. So let me know if you see it because it disappeared again. Also on my reply, when you read it, you will see this is a big. And so then I said, I found your comment and it is published now. Leland was one of the two YouTubers to be at the animal sacrifice on the Temple Mount. He is definitely in it deep. He is one of the main voices behind the 70 nations and Noahide laws. And then Nick came with, I, I see my comment to you, but I don't see my reply comment to Leland. Do you see it? If not, I can try to repost again, but it keeps disappearing. And I said, I do not see your comment to Leland. He may have a shadow band. My hunch has been that he is an Israeli unit 8200 guy all along. And Nick comes with his comment to Leland. Friend, it is not about forgiving me for my accurate identification of you in the scriptures. You are one of the false apostles of Revelation 2.2. Rather, it is about you repenting for the many years you have been preaching your false message, i.e. lies, that Revelation seals number 1 through 6 have been opened. Revelation seals 2 through 6 are cataclysmic events. The 2019 Los Angeles earthquake was not the sixth seal opening. Not one person died or one building collapsed, let alone the death and destruction of seals 2 through 5 ever happened. It is by your own words that you have self-proclaimed that Revelation seals 1-6 through six have occurred is your message. It is a false message, thus making you a false traveling messenger, apostle, prophesied of in Revelation 2-2. Two, two. Rather than being corrected by many people who are generally concerned for you, you rejected it, doubled down, and falsely designated us your enemy because we told you the truth. Galatians 4-16 now you want to forgive your enemies, talk about inverting the truth and flipping the narrative. I really hope you repent, and I perceive your repentance needs to start with the fifth commandment of honoring your parents, and whatever problem you have with your mom, you need to deal with it in respect to Elohim's sovereignty. So I'm going to skip through this mom stuff, some lady from Texas, that's really not important here. Um... And then he says, P.S., I do watch some of your videos and good find on the discrepancy details of the Passover events in the Gospels. When I revised my video from three years ago, where I previously had understood Messiah Yahushua died on the 15th, but now that you, with your find, I can reconcile his, de his death occurred on the 16th. Well, no, you're, you're actually psyoping this right now. He died on the 15th, Passover. It works perfectly on a sunrise start day, which I will show. No, no, you won't. It's impossible. Let's, let's have the discussion. We'll go through Adam Fink's video on dawn or dusk. Before getting your comment today, I already had planned to cite your find. I have no ill will for you. And as I said, one of my videos about you that I forgive you for your false curse. You tried to put on me, my house and my seed. But also, as I said, you have a bigger sin issue you need to deal with. And I hope you do. So that was his comment to, to Leland. And he says here, after waiting a day and reposting my comment for a fifth time, my reply to Leland finally went through. And in it, I explained why Leland is a literal fulfillment of Revelation 2.2 that I identified. You should look into Leland's false message that he proclaimed that Revelation seals 1 through 6 has happened and document this for yourself. I think your hunch about Leland is way off. And then it cuts off. All right. So I've got some comments to dig into here. I respond to Nick. Do you realize that we are real watchmen and have been calling out all the top fake Christian fake watchman channels 
since the Revelation 12 sign took place. Adam Fink, Justin Best, Steve Fletcher, Jerry Tooney, Leland Jones, and now Dr. Barry Awe. Steve, Jerry, and Barry tow the Freemason Jesuit lines, and Adam, Justin, and Leland tow the Judaizer lines. Not contemplating them as Israeli Unit 8200 agents would show an extreme lack of discernment. The idea that Leland could use my suggestion that he is Unit 8200 to somehow discredit me is the actual absurdity. Look at the video you are commenting on. Could Leland be mocked more for the insane lies and disinformation he promotes? Yet there is not a word he can say against us. Same with Adam and Justin and Steve and Jerry and Dr. Barry. Not one of them can talk about us because we overstand them on the truth and any engagement with us results in a defeat of themselves and their agendas. I like you, Nick, but it does not escape my attention that you are in the same position as Leland, Adam, and Justin. Out of the six fundamental truths, you are out of harmony with the actual truth in at least four of them. You pass number one, Earth is not a spinning ball, but you fail at number two, the Freemason New World Order AE map and model is the satanic psyop to discredit the Bible with an impossible flat Earth. Number three, I have never heard you talk about whether you believe in convalescent atoms, but people that know Earth is not a spinning ball and support the Freemason New World Order AE MAPA model are always convalescent atomists. You fail number four. You do not use the true names of the Creator and the Christ. You use names that have vowels like E, O, and U, correct? Anyone that has ever looked up the etymology of those letters knows that they are not ancient and come from the Masoretic ball points, not the actual Paleo-Hebrew. You fail number five. You are not promoting April 27th, 2021, is beginning Passover at sunset. You are promoting the Enoch calendar that cannot be used for finding Passover because it completely ignores the moon. As for number six, I do not know if you are Trinitarian or not. If you are, you would fail that truth as well. You are the person at risk of being called out, and this is your warning. If you promote anything that is in contradiction to the six fundamental truths in your content going forward, we are going to have to expose it. If you want to challenge us on the six fundamental truths, we welcome it. The truth fears no investigation, but actually wants it. We are not trying to alienate you, Nick. We are trying to reprove you with a foundation built off of the actual truth. Your argument against Leland is his unwillingness to repent of sharing lies and disinformation. Now we will see if you respond with the repentance you wish to see from Leland, but for yourself. Do not let your ego get in the way. Follow the path of truth and you will be saved from destruction. But follow disinformation with a prideful heart and you will burn in hell for eternity. This is not what we want. You seem like a nice guy that would be, be fun to hang out with during the millennial reign of Yahawashai. I hope you do not take offense to this, but I feel that you and I seem to have similar genetic markers and could be not so distant relatives. So Nick's response to that was this. According to Ezekiel 33, if you read the chapter carefully, there is only one watchman, not plural. Mm. I have a video on this person being the end time Elijah type to be promised. You should watch my video, Elijah, the Ezekiel 33 watchman. That's the one we're going to have to go through. Many of the people you named are agents, but not 8200. Uh, how does he know that? Rather, they are agents of Satan and confusion and are adversaries to the truth. As for Leland, using your hunch, I agree the documented facts are the facts and they are proof that Leland is deceived and deceiving. Leland has a small cult following of people and most of them are not concerned with facts. Rather, they have attached themselves emotionally to Leland's personality and thus Leland could use your far-fetched hunch association as a straw man to bolster the captivity of his loyal followers. Jason, all I am saying is that your hunch is really far-fetched and it's better to dial it back. 
to what you can prove an agent of Satan. Now, regarding your six fundamental truths, why six? Is that not a number of man? Why is there not more? It started with four, but it's, well, I'll explain. I want to be clear. I don't know your full idea definition of Judaizers. For instance, myself, I am about the two greatest commandments, which are a summary of the 10 commandments, which are eternal law and the Sabbath day is of the 10 and is valid, not done away with. As for the Sabbath day, there are at least four different Sabbath days. At least four different. One, the Gregorian Saturday Sabbath, which is the Jewish Sabbath. Two, the Christian Sabbath, which is the Gregorian Sunday. Three, the lunar Sabbath. And four, the solar heavenly Sabbath, which I restored the lost concept of. Only one of these is the true and correct Sabbath. And just because I have a unique understanding, I don't judge other people for having a false Sabbath day. (laughs) Just because he has a unique understanding, right? He's got the correct one. He... He's not going to judge people for having a false Sabbath day. I understand people are doing the best with their best understanding and people's understanding is limited. The Sabbath day, I understand since it was lost about 1900 years ago has turned into a concept. It's not the people trying their best with the info that are in danger, rather that it is those who reject the concept and application of Sabbath days as they have rejected the law of their Elohim. So back to Judaizers, in addition to the Ten Commandments, there are still many parts of the Torah applicable since our Israelite relatives have been in diaspora from the Holy Land. Torah means instruction, and there are good, very good instructions for healthy living found in the Torah. Not wearing mixed fibers, not eating unclean food, sexual cleanness guidelines, dealing with mold contamination, menstruating women, there is so much more. More so, righteous living, for instance, Zacchaeus, When he came to faith in Messiah Yahusha and made repentance, he made restitution in line with the instructions of Moses. That was that was Yeshua. He had the Yeshua one. Yeshua. So Zacchaeus, we're going to be covering this. He's he's straight up sigh up in this. We're going to be pointing that out. There is so much good in the law, but as for the Jewish customs that have no scriptural basis, I reject all that and despise it. I also restored the concept to only eat boiled flesh because by boiling it, it removes the blood. The true covenant of Noah I I restored is to only eat boiled flesh with the exception of the Passover, which can only be eaten in Jerusalem. Did you know that? You can only eat the Passover in Jerusalem? There is healthy benefits to not eat the blood. So, Number two, as for the oblique Mercator flat earth map model, I don't know enough about it. I have seen some videos on the topic and I haven't done any testing of it. I am skeptic of it, but I haven't formalized by belief on the topic. This is responses to to the things that I listed. Number three, Kabbalist atoms. I have no idea what you are referring to. Atomic weight? protons, neutrons, and electrons? Yeah, those things. Do you think they are real? Do you believe in atoms? Do you believe in nuclear bombs? That was the question. Number four, it is prophesied in the scriptures that the language pronunciation will be restored. I understand it will be restored supernaturally, like the tongues of fire on Shavuot. (sighs) The true names, brother. We've, We've had them for from quite some time. My response is going to have a, a few timestamps for that. And um, yeah, they're already they're already here. I understand this event will happen when the escape happens. No, it's done already. Number five, the solar calendar I publish is accurate. It's true. As for the sheep being in the sky that Josephus wrote about, there is something called the procession of the equinoxes In Jewish Josephus, idea is bogus. Seasons are determined, calibrated by the sun in respect to when the sun crosses the equinox, not by when the sun is in a certain constellation. 
Number six, I am not a Trinitarian. I currently understand there to be distinctly both the Father and the Son, and they are united one. Well, he ignored the Holy Spirit there. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they're each distinct. In Acts 16, 7, the translator scribes omitted Yeshua from spirit of Yeshua. The Greek word is in the text, but they didn't translate it and left it out completely. They did this to falsely support their false trinity narrative. Yeshua also appears in the Aramaic, the spirit of Yeshua. No, this is a bad response. Um, so here's, here's where I... I take them apart again. You call them agents, but I, but to say they are 8,200 is way too far for you to go. Agents of Satan is much better for you. Well, what do you think 8,200 is? Regardless, I saw your Ezekiel Watchman 33 video when it came out and reviewed it again. I will be using some timestamps from your video coming up, but let's stick with your comment for now. Your question was, why six? The answer is that we had four fundamental truths beginning when we suggested the possibility of Ronnie and I being the two witnesses. Yes, the, the people that have followed along probably aware that we have suggested the possibility. We don't have supernatural powers now, but we have contemplated these two witness characters, and we're always looking for fulfillments of things to, to see whether or not this possibility actualizes. Um, I will quote from the description box of the video. The main things Team Yahushai teaches are, now I don't have to read all these right now. They're in the description box of all the videos. They're moving in and out of lower thirds. Um, and then I say, these are the four fundamental truths we have stood upon for nearly four years. Recently, we realized that someone could agree with all four fun fundamental truths and still want to celebrate Yahushua's victory meal on the wrong day, or could believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit could be one entity while still getting through the four fundamental truth gates and would still be wrong. So we are in the process of proving truth number five, the true Hebrew calendar, and truth number six, the Trinity is Kabbalist paganism that crept into the true faith at the Council of Nicaea 325. The Father is the Father, the Son is the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Just because Yahweh said he and the Father are one does not mean that they were literally the same entity. Nothing supports that except for a false translation of John 1, John 1, 1 we have exposed already. When I say Judaizer, I literally am referring to the number one Google search result for what Judaizing is said to mean. And that's, that's in the thumbnail tonight. It's Wikipedia, that statement that's C. Nick Vanderlane. That is the statement, what Judaizing is. Let's Judaizers are Christians, both Jewish and non-Jewish, who teach that it is necessary for Christians to adopt Jewish laws and customs, especially those Jewish laws and customs which are prescribed in the law of Moses. Well, that's, that is Judaizing. Your statement that there are four different Sabbaths and that you do not judge anyone for following a false Sabbath means that you cannot be classified as a watchman. If you have used that term in regards to yourself, you stand to receive blood guilt. To your response to number two, the notion that you would call the stereographic map that we have used for nearly four years an oblique mercator defies your knowledge of it. Nobody knows it's an oblique mercator except for some. Uh, for someone that has been briefed on it. Name one video that explains how an oblique mercator is the most accurate stereographic map of a flat earth that was not produced by us, or you are a liar. To your response to number three atoms, I'm sure that you have heard of them. They say that they are building blocks of this reality. The ancient Greek philosophy that set the stage for heliocentrism and the Big Bang? We have covered the origins of atomism and how it is Kabbalism. If you believe in atoms, you are a Kabbalist. 
Are you one of those fake truthers that still thinks nukes are real? To your response to number four, the true pronunciations have been restored. Here is the link to the video I did in January 12, 2017. That's the true names of the creator and the Christ in the updated version, November 11th, 2019. That's the letter J and the Jesus is God, Siah. If you wish to challenge us on the true pronunciation of the Father's name or our Savior's name, please schedule for a hangout where we can cover this live. To your response to number five, the solar calendar you publish is accurate. Now explain to me how you are going to use a solar calendar to find Passover or a Sabbath. And did you really just bring up procession of the equinox when you claim to be a flat earther? You were going to go with the 26,000 year orbital wobble of earth and gravity in a heliocentric big bang over the sun being in Aries, the lamb for Passover. To your response to number six, it is good that you're not a Trinitarian, but once again, you are demonstrating no knowledge of long called out psyops. When you use names like Yeshua, you put yourself in the group of people that use the Masoretic vowel points which most people call the Jews now. The E, O, and U are not ancient. They were derived from the Masoretic vowel points. So there's some timestamps here to that, to that video, the Ezekiel 33 Watchman. And uh, I say here, once again, the warning is being given again. If you promote doctrine that is not in harmony with the six fundamental truths, we are going to call you out for it. You put yourself in a self-proclaimed position of determining who the returned Elijah is, and we are going to be hanging on your every word. All right, I think we've got one. I know this is going on for a while. How long have I been reading? About 30 minutes. Oof, sorry, brother. That's okay. You got to do but, it. Um, so one day ago, Jason, in context of Ezekiel 33, we see the watchman's message to his people to doing lawful works of the commandments or statutes worthy of repentance. Verse 14 through 16, again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt certainly die, if he turn from a sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, the pledge, give again that he had robbed, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. So this, this is important stuff that we got to be getting into. This is the pledge. This is in Ezekiel 33. I want to sort of speed through a little bit of this right here. Um, he's asking me, if the Ezekiel 33 watchman is a Judaizer, this, um, his scriptures that he's quoting, he's coming from Ezekiel, he's coming from Isaiah, and I think he's got Ecclesiastes. So he, all of this is him trying to support that we have to, we have to keep the law, the Ten Commandments and the Sabbath. This is this is all about that, and it's all from the Old Testament. So he's not he's not covering what Yahweh Shai did, strictly taking it back to the law, back to the law. So my response: No, you go wrong in your very first sentence. The lawful works of the commandments, statutes, were for that time. When was Ezekiel? During a time period when the law was in effect, of course. What about Isaiah? Was he alive when the law was in effect? Of course. What happened when Yehoshai came? He fulfilled the law and put an end to it with new commandments, which were much simpler. You are the epitome of a Judaizer when you suggest that the Ezekiel 33 watchmen would be putting people back under the old law covenant. Um, so that I'm quoting scripture. Yeah, we'll be getting into some scripture after. Yeah. Why is all of your argument for keeping the Ten Commandments and Sabbaths based off the Old Testament only? Did you know, how wish I tell his followers that salvation came by keeping the law? 
why do you not quote from Isaiah when he writes and uh, stop bringing your meaningless offerings? So this was in the Old Testament. This was already mm-hmm. when um, they had become disgraceful. As Isaiah, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And below. So these are the scriptures that I'd like you to quickly read. This is going to be the starting to the refutation of the law keepers. All right. Well, so what this is, these are, this is the paraphrase of the scripture. So you can, you can go read Romans 3.20, and this right here is the paraphrase of it. But the law reveals sin, but cannot fix it, Romans 3.20. If the law worked, then faith would be irre- irrelevant, Romans 4.14. The law brings wrath upon those who follow it, Romans 4.15. The purpose of the law was to increase sin, Romans 5.20. Christians are not under the law, Romans 6.14. Christians have been delivered from the law, Romans 7, 1 through 6. The law is good, perfect, and holy, but cannot help you be good, perfect, or holy, Romans 7, 7 through 12. The law which promises life only brings death through sin, Romans 7, 10. The law makes you sinful beyond measure, Romans 7, 13. The law is weak, Romans 8, 2 through 3. The strength of sin is in the law. 1 Corinthians 15.56 The law is a ministry of death. 2 Corinthians 3.7 The law is a ministry of condemnation. 2 Corinthians 3.9 The law has no glory at all in comparison with the new covenant. 2 Corinthians 3.10 The law is fading away. 2 Corinthians 3.11 Anywhere the law is preached, it produces a mind-hardening and heart-hardening veil. 2 Corinthians 3, 14 through 15. The law justifies nobody. Galatians 2, 16. Christians are dead to the law. Galatians 2, 19. The law frustrates grace. Galatians 2, 21. To go back to the law after embracing faith is stupid. Galatians 3, 1. The law curses all who practice it and fail to do it perfectly. Galatians 3, 10. The law has nothing to do with faith. Galatians 3.11-12. through 12. The law was a curse that Christ redeemed us from. Galatians 3.13. The law functioned in Yahweh's purpose as a temporary covenant from Moses till John the Baptist, Baptist announced Christ. Galatians 3.16-19. and 19. Also Matthew 11.12-13 and Luke 16.16. 16. If the law worked, Yahweh would have used it to save us. Galatians 3.21. The law was our prison, Galatians 3.23. The law makes you a slave like Hagar, Galatians 4.24. Christ was abolished, the law which was a wall of hostility, Ephesians 2.15. Paul considered everything the law gained them as skybalon, which is Greek for poop, Philippians 3.4-8. The law is weak, useless, and makes nothing perfect, Hebrews 7.18-19. Yahweh has found fault with it and created a better covenant enacting on better promises. Hebrews 8, 7 through 8. It is obsolete, growing old, and ready to vanish. Hebrews 8, 13. And it is only a shadow of good things to come and will never make someone perfect. Hebrews 10, 1. That's, that right there is like, wow. Wow. When I, when I saw that list of scriptures, I was, like that's that's pretty obvious i <laughs> i don't know you could see it any other way yeah i can but, yeah we'll be making it even more obvious but that definitely were all witnesses to the testifying that yahushai's way was greater than that of the father it goes the father the son and the holy spirit right yahushai was the whole the second dispensation all right so there's there's one more aspect coming up here that uh, like to get out there. Your argument is that of a Judaizer, and there is another psyop being run by the Judaizers that we are going to call out having to do with the blessings to Ephraim. My text here will be the prelude to videos on this topic. Let's get a few things straight about Ephraim. Ephraim was given a blessing over his older brother Manasseh, but is nothing like the blessings given to Judah and Levi, their uncles. Genesis 48, 14, but Israel crossed his hands and put his right hand on the head 
the younger boy Ephraim. Then he put his left hand on Manasseh, even though Manasseh was the firstborn. In Israel, blessed Joseph and said, My ancestors, Abraham and Isaac, worshipped our Elohim, and that Elohim has led me all my life. He was the angel who saved me from all my troubles, and I pray that he will bless these boys. Now they will have my name in the name of our ancestors, Abraham and Isaac. I pray that they will grow to become great families and nations on earth. So Israel, which is Jacob, right, blessed Joseph, his son. This is the one that went to Egypt and his sons, and said, Joseph's sons would have my name, that would be Israel's name, and that they would grow and become many. It continues, but his father refused and said, I know, son, I, I know, Manasseh is the firstborn. He will be great and will be the father of many people, but his younger brother will be greater than he is, and the younger brother's family will be much larger. So Israel blessed them that day. He said, the Israelites will use your names whenever they bless someone. They will say, may Yahweh make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. In this way, Israel made Ephraim greater than Manasseh. So that was it. That, was, that is the extent of the blessing given to Ephraim. End of story. Ephraim turned out to be a wicked, uh, wicked and a ruler of the ten northern kingdoms that rebelled and became wicked. Isaac's blessings to Judah and Levi are a completely different story. To Judah was given kingship, and to Levi was given the high priest. These are two really big and important blessings. The position of high priest and king are all throughout scripture. Yehoshai is a prince that is made king and sits the right hand of his father, Yehoah. Yehoshai is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Kingship is given to the tribe of Judah. The high priest is of the tribe of Levi and anoints the king, which means he has to be Yahweh, Yahweh's father. We're looking for the two witnesses who we know are the spirits of Moses and Elijah because Yahweh said Elijah would be returning again in what was seen at the transfiguration. There are two witnesses and two blessings. I see the agenda at play with Judaizers only talking about the blessing to Ephraim was given and not putting it in context. That was a minor blessing and has nothing to do with the blessing of kingship and high priest. I also see people trying to say that Ephraim is England and the USA. He's one of them. How do we know that Ephraim's blessing was minor? Because Yahweh was born through the tribe of Judah. And the Levites were the high priests. Also, I see a lot of Judaizers talking about how Israel, Jacob, cursed Levi, but we'll be showing how Jacob's curse was actually necessary for the Levites to be scattered throughout the land for them to act as the high priests. The fact that the Levites were the high priests proves that they were given their blessing. I am frustrated with you, Nick, at every turn you are taking the Judaizer path. I asked you a bunch of questions that you completely disregarded and you went straight into more Judaizing rebuttals. You think I should focus more on bringing people back under the old law covenant instead of focusing on a path of pure truth and righteousness. The six fundamental truths serve their purpose to filter out those that are willing to sacrifice truth for personal gain or acceptance within the satanic beast system. Only the fourth is necessary for salvation, but each one of them is foundational. You do not even use our Savior's true name for salvation, and yet you think you can tell me to focus on the old law instead of the six fundamental truths? Plus, if keeping Sabbath is so important, your previous comments said that there were four different Sabbaths, but that you would not call anyone out for doing it wrong. That literally makes you blood guilty if you believe keeping Sabbath is so important. You are becoming a continuous contradiction. I feel like we have gotten enough of this preamble stuff out of the way, and now it's time to schedule a hangout where we can get this all out in the open and settled. And then here's your comment, brother. Do you want to read it? Do you want to take a break? <laughs> yes. Let me see if I can, I can see it on the screen here. I said, <sighs> brother, all I can add here is this. You fast with the contention and the strife 
to strike viciously with your fist. You cannot fast as you do today and have your voice be heard on high. Is this the fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to deny himself, to bow his head like a reed, and to spread out the sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast? And then it's truncated. Um, let me see here. I think I have that scripture. I'll be going into this scripture again later. Uh, isn't this the fast that I have chosen to break the chains of the wickedness, to unite the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and to tear off every single yoke? Isn't it to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the poor, the homeless into your home, and to clothe the naked when you see him, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? That's what I said to Nick. Nice. So, um, how about... I take a little break and I got stuff. You, you go through your stuff. And then after that, we'll go into his Ezekiel 33 stuff. Okay. Uh, you can let go of the screen share if you want. I've already got the thumbnail up and we can get into what I've got prepared here. This should be interesting. Sounds good. <clears throat> Thank you everybody for sticking through that. Great job, Jason, going through the back and forth. I see uh, a narrative that's being formed between the two conversations and uh, I'm glad that we were able to talk about it and get this out on the public for everybody to see. Jason and I believe that everything we do should be always uh, public. We don't want to hide anything. You know, of course you have your private life. There is a section of time where you can be offline, but everything that comes to the truth and the fight for the kingdom of heaven should be done openly. That way your father in heaven will reward you openly in the same way. Or, I mean, <laughs> I just messed that up. Sorry. <laughs> Pray in privately. That is where you'll be rewarded. But anything about the truth can be done openly so that everyone can gain from it. You don't set a city. A city set on a hill can never be hidden, right? You'll always see it. You don't put a, a lamp underneath your bed. You put it up on the high area of the room so that the light reaches everywhere. These are the things that we need to focus on. So where I'd like to start today is in... Genesis, when we get the scripture that's pointing forward. So prophecy is done through prospectfully writing things down, right? When you understand prophecy, when it's fulfilled, you look backwards retrospectfully and say, wow, that was prophesied then. We just seen that happen. We're now looking back <clears throat> and we witness to it. So this first scripture says from Genesis 3.15, and I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So this is a, a parable that is also linked to the uh, torture stake. When they, they pounded it into the ground, it apparently Goliath's head, because when David decapitated Goliath, he took the skull there and buried it. And it was Golgotha, the, the place of skulls. And the stake was supposedly went down and, and crushed the head of Goliath. So we'll continue on here. So now we have Moses. So everybody always wants to take this back to Moses. Moses, Moses. The Judaizers always say, oh, the law was given through Moses. So here in Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, we get Moses saying, the Lord your Yahweh will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your Yahweh at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, Lord, let us not hear the voice of the Lord, our Yahweh, nor see the great fire anymore, lest we die. And the Lord said unto me, what they say is good. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. And I will pour my words through into his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks of in my name. So the Moses was given the commandments from Yahweh. And Yahweh came to him and said, because Moses, Yahweh came down and the people were like, kill us. We want to die. Yahweh said, that's good that you fear me. Fearing me is the first step towards salvation. And he said, I will send a prophet like unto Moses greater than he, because Yahweh Shai gave a new set of commandments 
that were greater than the ones that Moses was given. So we can continue on forward here. This scripture, Isaiah 29, 13, we're getting closer to Yahushua's time now. These were, I started with Genesis and I'm working my way forward here. And it says, thus says the Lord, these people come near me, come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. This is a common theme we're going to continue with. Now we're back, <coughs> excuse me, now we're in Isaiah 58, 6. And it says here, is this the fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to deny himself? To bow his head like a reed and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to me? Isn't this a fast that I have chosen? To break the chains of the wickedness, to unite the cords of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free, and to tear off every yoke. Isn't it to share your bread with the hungry and bring the poor and bring to the poor and the homeless into your home to clothe the naked when you see them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? These are the scriptures that was said, right? He's, he's telling them the, the prophecy looking forward is someone's going to come and set the oppressed free. He's going to tear off every yoke. So when we hear the yoke, it's likened unto a weight that was put on an ox like a, a giant uh, collar that he was able to pull the plow with. So it was something very weighing you down because that's what Jason just went through with the New Testament, showing you how the law was just like a weight. And they said someone was going to come and he was going to destroy that. He was going to set everyone free. And that was Yahushai. And that's what the victory meal we're celebrating is coming up this month, the first month of the year. It's interesting. Now we've, we've now arrived at Yahushai. Here he's on the scene. And let's see what he does here. Yahushai is Lord of the Sabbath. Yes. It says, One Sabbath, Yahushai was going through the grain fields. And as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful upon the Sabbath? Like, boil, they're not boiling meat. And he answered, Have you never read that David, what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abathar, the high priest, he entered the house of Yahweh and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for the priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. <sighs> then he then said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. He came here and he was proclaiming what it meant, what it was. The Sabbath was a shadow of the great millennial reign, the thousand years, right? That's what the seventh day is. A day, a day in heaven is a thousand years here on earth. You have seven days of creation. You have 7,000 year timeline. The last thousand year, once we get past six, is the Yahushai millennial reign. And this was what his ministry was promoting. That's what he was teaching. And then it says here, we go back to Isaiah because Isaiah spoke of Yahushai too. And he said, here is my servant whom I will uphold, mine chosen one in whom I delight. I will pour my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nation. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teachings, the islands will be put their hope. This is what Yahweh, the Elohim says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreadeth the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and the life to those who walk on it. I, the Elohim, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand and I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light unto the Gentiles to open their eyes, to set the free, the captives from prison and to release from the dungeon, those who sit in darkness. Now packed into this scripture here is so many prophecies and fulfillments. Adam and his descendants were in Sheol in darkness. Yahushai went down and freed them. Three and a half days, he went into Sheol. He went inside of the simulation, inside of the worst spot, and he actually corrected the error in it. 
and he freed Adam. There was people resurrected running around Jerusalem. This was one of the most supernatural things that ever took place here in this realm. And all of this was fulfilled. We can retrospectively look back and understand a light for the Gentiles. This is something that Judaizers have a huge issue with, right? They, what you get today is you've got the one group that says that we are Yahweh's chosen people. And you need to serve us. And then they misquote scriptures. They read from non-canonical sources without the parabolic meanings. They just come up with their Talmud stuff and they just pollute everything. It's getting to the point now where they want you to worship them more than you worship the Father in heaven. It's, it's getting to that point. So we move on here. This one, Jeremiah 31, 33. It says, I will not be like the covenant. <clears throat> it will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, which is the law with Moses, a covenant they broke, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. But this is a covenant I will make with them. The house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and inscribe it on their hearts. And I will be their Elohim and they will be my people. No longer will each man teach his neighbor or his brother saying, know the Yahweh, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquities and will remember their sins no more. The people that follow Yahweh Shai, that listen to his commandments and do exactly what he told us to do with all of our hearts and all of our minds, and we worship the Father with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our minds, we are going to be forgiven. We are forgiven. We've already received the forgiven. All we have to do now is fight for the truth and continue to never back down to anyone. Never let anyone steal what you've been entrusted with. And we come to Matthew 15, 11 now. And it says, Yehoshai called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. A man is not defiled by what he eats or what enters his mouth, but what comes out of it. So this really triggered the Pharisees because like Nick, they go around saying that you need to eat boiled meat. You can have shellfish. They start listing off all these different commandments of men and their hearts are far from the father. What, what more is it if you can't, if you're starving and there's uh, bacon, <laughs> someone's made bacon and a starving man is outside. Is that man, is he blaspheming because he takes that portion of bacon and eats and lives? Or is it the, the will of the father to feed his children through any means that he sees fit? We can continue on. Peter wrote about this. After this section, Jason, I can turn it back to you for a bit if you want. This is Peter's vision. So this is what I have to answer to anyone who tries to tell me that I can't have. Well, of course, I take Yahushua's word first, but then we get Paul's Peter's witness. And it says about noon the following day, they were on their journey approaching the city. Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to the earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of animals and four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then the voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything in impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that Yahweh hath made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. And they called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. Again, Simon's name was changed from Simon to Peter, because Peter was the rock that Yahushai built his foundation upon, because Peter listened to the heavenly language. He spoke it. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Simon, Three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs, and do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. And Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? And the men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and Yahweh fearing man, who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house 
so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together all of his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. And he said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But Yahweh hath shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May May I ask why I was sent? And Cornelius answered, Three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour, at three in the afternoon, and suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me. And he said, Cornelius, Yahweh has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of Yahweh to listen to everything that Yahweh hath commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that Yahweh does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. This right here is one of the most important scriptures that we could, you know, data mine in the, in the, in the New Testament. This was how the door was opened up. So when people try to tell you dietary laws, like you can't eat this or you can't eat that, what they need to understand is the reason that that was instituted was so that this could happen in the future. So that the parabolic language was that the people, the Gentiles, were like the food that they weren't supposed to associate with. But because they failed, just like we all fail, nobody's perfect except for Yahushai, there was a way made for everyone. And you needed to understand that there was a dietary law put in place. People had to be clean and there was unclean. And now what happened was it came down to your righteousness in your heart. Righteousness in your heart. <clears throat> no favoritism, but accept every nation of the one who fears him and does what is right. That's what Jason and I have been saying for the past three and a half, four years we've been talking together is everybody, the most important thing is that you don't lie. Don't try to, you know, be da- be gazzle people. Don't try to take advantage of anything. Be upright in your thoughts. Well, this does what is right is what is really going to become the, the crux of the matter in the whole Ezekiel 33 thing mm-hmm. that we're going to be going into. So yeah, this, the, the harmony in the scriptures, you're going to see that it's, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, me to... that's the stopping point right there. I still have got a, b- a bunch of more links to get into, but that was the basic starting point of basically showing how the dietary laws were done away with. Anyone that thinks that they can't eat shellfish or that they can't have bacon or anything like that, you're absolutely in defiance of what the boss, the big boss and the boss that he sent. He sent his son, who is the boss over everything, and they both say you can eat anything. We're going to get in. There's more scriptures for that, but let me get you back onto the presentation screen. Uh, You've got the transcript open. Is that how you want it? Yeah, but you can, you don't have to show the transcript. Okay. let me. Uh, I'm just going to use it to help scroll through here. There's not much to see in the screen other than his really neat uh, Fred Flintstone top that he has here. I guess he's in the hospital, right? (laughs) Yeah, he, he's going to talk about it. I guess he had time while he was in there to do his prophecy video. It's, I, okay, Nick, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, good to go. All right, so this is Nick's Ezekiel 33 Watchman video that he thinks is so important. And um, it is, it is. We're going to, oh, how much time do we have, brother? I wish people could just hear Ezekiel 33 by itself without um all right i've got the i've got the audio up and i would like to just run through ezekiel 33 quick and um and let people hear this before before nick carves it up um i think what i'm going to do is i'll play the audio here and then it's not that long of a clip 
No, it's just five and a half minutes, really. So let's listen to it. This way I don't have to read, and I'll highlight it for you on another tab. Chapter 33. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked man from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, if our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousnesses shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin, and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you, every one, after his ways. And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, the city is smitten. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening, afore he that was escaped came, and had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning. And my mouth was opened, and I was no more dumb. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land, but we are many, the land is given us for inheritance. Wherefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Ye eat with the blood, and lift up your eyes toward your idols, and shed blood. And shall ye possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword, ye work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife. And shall ye possess the land? Say thou thus unto them, thus saith the Lord God, As I live, surely they that are in the wastes shall fall by the sword, and him that is in the open field will I give to the beasts to be devoured, and they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. For I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of her strength shall cease, and the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am the Lord, when I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. Also thou son of man, 
The children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. All right, so that is Ezekiel 33. And um, now Nick's going to do commentary on that. And we are going to pick apart his criticism and, and show where it's, it's not right. So I know I've, I've been switching screens on your brother. I don't know if you want to. It's already fixed. All right, thank you. Link, identify him as the watchman of Ephraim and prophet of Hosea chapter 9. I then will link and identify him as the messenger to Ephraim of Isaiah 28, whom I had already identified as the Elijah type. There are many more roles prophesied regarding the identity of this person, but for the sake of this video, I want to keep it consistent of this person being the prophet, messenger, and watchman of Ephraim USA. So he just says Ephraim USA, and that's that's the reason why I'm just making sure that people understand the, the blessing to Ephraim is nothing like the blessing to Levi and Judah, the, the kingship and high priesthood. So this Ephraim and USA stuff, eh, no. But first, before we get into this video, I want to do a disclaimer and a warning that Elijah won't be campaigning to be Elijah. After making several videos on the end time Elijah, I've received many comments from many people on YouTube, all claiming to be Elijah, and they are desiring me to recognize them as him. LOL. So his ministry, he goes to, he goes to Israel and he's got all these people on YouTube telling him I'm Elijah, I'm Elijah. And he sees that as, as funny. Also, while in Jerusalem, I met several people claiming to be Elijah. That's that's just too big of a coincidence. You have people all over YouTube saying they are Elijah, and you have met people in Jerusalem claiming to be Elijah as well. There's I'm seeing a psyop at play there. These demonic-influenced people are just a few of the many people fulfilling Master Yeshua the Messiah's prophecy. For many shall come in my name, saying, now notice that this is about the Messiah. This is about Yahweh Shai. For many shall come in his name. There's going to be Antichrist, false prophets. But he's applying this to Elijah. So he's, he's distorting scripture already. Saying, I am Messiah and shall deceive many. Mark 13, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Messiah or I am he and shall deceive many. Luke 21, 8, and he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and the time draweth near, go ye not after them. Here's Mark, and as you can see in Mark, the Aramaic translation, not different from the Greek, has something different. It says, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the living God, and they will deceive many. And we've seen that over the years, over the, over the century and millennia, many have done this. Okay, that is true. Yeshua prophesied that. Some say, I am he. Some say, I am Messiah. The word Christos, or for Messiah, in the Greek is not in the text. It's actually implied. So that's why some say, I am, I am he. The word he is implied as well in the English translations. The Christ, the word Christ or Messiah uh, is implied in there. So the he, the he is just a Yah, right? Yah, Hawa, means he exists, right? Mm -hmm. You can add Yah. To any name so the fact that he's pointing that out is a bit suspect i don't know where and the other issue is does he think that this end time elijah character is a messiah so is he saying that it's 
Messiah Yahushai is also Elijah? Is that yeah. how? Well, see, he uses he uses um, a, a semantic argument that he's anointed, right? Because I guess Messiah means anointed, so anointed one. That's true. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be saying, "I am who." Well, Elijah, the end time Elijah type, will be a messianic type, which I will be proving later up in a coming okay. up okay series. Okay. Not the capital, the Messiah, but a Messiah. Remember, David. Was so how many how many characters does he have right now? He's he's talking about two characters now, right? Not the Messiah, but a Messiah. So, two, no, not just one. Was a Messiah. All the kings were messiahs. They were anointed ones. This person will also be an anointed one, but not the anointed one, which is Master Yeshua, the Messiah. But the Aramaic that gives was us all some saying, "I am the living." Yeah. So and he, this he, Master so, Yeshua stuff is. He did he, he maybe he needed to capitalize, um, anointed. So the capital all all caps Yeshua he uses the Yiddish the Yiddish name where the Masoretes added the vowel points. Right to transliterate it and muck it up, but he uses that name, and then he said the anointed. But before he said that Elijah's anointed as well, and all the kings of the earth are anointed. So this mess of combobulation that he's got going on here isn't pointing the straight path in any way. And it will get worse. And God, and they will deceive many. So whatever the case is, I am He. I am Messiah. So another consistency in these verses is for many, for many shall come, for many shall come, for many shall come. Well, that reminded me of something. And as I mentioned, these people are plagued with... Because because the word many, he, he saw many, and this is referring to people coming in Yahushua's name. Yeah, there's, there's many people saying they're anointed. You got Trump, you got Obama, you got this new guy, uh, whatever his name is, over in... You know israel right now you've got many people saying they're messiah that's that's nothing new you know so he's gonna take that to so oh, wait we be, are wait money. because there's many people saying they're messiah he's saying that you won't there won't be one is that is that his point well we'll see demons and remember what the demons said after master yeshua the messiah asked its name the demon replied my name is legion for we are many. Wow. So I don't want to be seeing any more, Eli I'm Elijah, and, uh, you, you're going to go to hell, or you're going to go in the tribulation if you don't recognize me as Elijah. These people are brutal in their comments. I never publish them. I always delete them all, delete them. So he gets all these comments from people that say that they're Elijah, telling him that he's going to... Uh... He's going to be rebuked. He's going to go to hell, but he deletes them all. What a what a life this guy leads. Delete them all, delete them all. So I, I would love to get all of these guys that are saying they're Elijah all in the same room. It would be kind of funny to, to see these people, you know, all trying to argue that they're Elijah. Maybe I should try to organize a live stream with all these guys and put them all, all in the same Zoom meeting and see, yeah, see them should. all debate why they're the Elijah. Why didn't he? That would have been excellent to watch. So if one thing I want to quickly point out here is Jason and I are actually actively watching to see if there are two men that become the two witnesses. So we want to see everyone that claims to have righteousness in them. Whoever it is that's speaking, we, yeah, we want to hear. We don't want to delete it. We want to see these people, right? How do we know that maybe they are sent? We don't know. We have to investigate every spirit. Always. Test all spirits, yeah. So he... He has put himself in the self-proclaimed position of being the arbiter of who the who the correct Elijah the, is. Yeah, the end time Elijah, the chief musician, right? That's what he says. Because David was a musician and anointed. That is true. So Moses was also an anointed one. So was Yahushai was the top, top anointed, right? We've established that. At least we have that narrative going. And Yahushai did say that Elijah would be returning to set things straight. I mean, we heard it from Yahushai. It's it's going to happen.
<laughs> Maybe make a game show out of it. That'll be funny. So I understand the Elijah type person won't be campaigning to be Elijah. And all you out there claiming to be him, uh, you better repent. And I hope that you do so. You all have demons. You all are being influenced by demons. And I hope you all repent. So now let's go ahead and get into the study of Elijah, the Ezekiel 33 watchman. So not only is the Ezekiel 33 watchman, but we're going to find out the watchman is also a prophet of Ezekiel chapter 33. In Ezekiel 33, we see this person, the watchman, is also a prophet. And in Ezekiel 33, we get detail of his election by the people. His location of origin is the coastlands of his, of his people. His job description of looking out for the coming sword his warning of repentance and teaching of righteousness and his insight, the watchman's insight of the reason for the coming judgment of the inhabitants of the waste lands of Israel. It appears at the end of the chapter, the rapture escape event or whatever this event is at that time of the sword that the leftover people will shockingly recognize there was a prophet among them. Ezekiel chapter 33. And again, the word of Yahweh was unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them. So this person is speaking to the children of his people. And later we'll find out that this is he's, he's the watchman of Ephraim, which means he's speaking to the Ephraimites. When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts... The Ephraimite stuff is just garbledy goop. Yeah, he just right. inserted that. Yeah. Is not the watchman to the Ephraimites. Well, I mean, he's calling them out, right? He's he is warning them, but um, yeah, it's it's the tribes of Judah and Levi that were given the blessings. It's not like this. There's this Ephraimite hero that is a, a solo, solo person, which is what he really tries to promote. And set him for the watchman. So the sword is coming upon the land of the Ephraimites. That's what we'll get. And this person is from their coasts. From the coast. Where does it say of Ephraimite? Their, of, and the people are going to. Right. Where? Does it say Ephraimite? No. He, he inserts it. He, he just insert. Insert. So the northern kingdoms. Is that what he's discussing here? Saying, oh, they're going to. What about the southern kingdoms? Were they being righteous still? Misinterpreting this whole scripture. Badly. We're going to set him for their watchman, which means that he's going to be elected or taken and said, Plop, you're our watchman. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he bloweth the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own. So there's this whole first section about being a watchman. And, and this is something that Ronnie and I have been talking about, how you can only be a watchman if you're calling out wolves in sheep's clothing. You have to be calling out doctrinal lies. You have to be calling out. You have to be calling out. That is the job of a watchman. If you're not warning, you're not a watchman. And so we've been harping on that. And that is right in Ezekiel 33, that, that warning to the watchman. Be a watchman, but you gotta you gotta call somebody out to be one. His own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not the warning, his blood shall be upon him upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the now what is the warning? The warning is gonna be his message. The trumpet is this man's message that we'll find out later on when I compare him to the messenger to Ephraim and also uh, make that connection there. Whoa. But if the watchman seeth the sword come and bloweth not the trumpet, and the people be not warned if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, and his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, son of man, I have set thee as a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost. Speak to warn the wicked from his way that the wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But if his blood, I will require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, 
And if he do not turn from his, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So by this message, this person is going to be able to deliver thy soul. So what is the message? The message is the Ten Commandments, which we're going to see. <laughs> no. <laughs> the message is the Ten Commandments. And so he's saying that the Ezekiel watchman is going to totally throw away what Yahushai did and take people back to the old law covenant. No, that's Judaizing. No. Absolutely, completely against everything that was laid down prophetically. There's never been a time where they said that we were going to regress. Never. We're not going to go back under the law of Moses and throw the yoke upon our heads after we receive salvation for Yahushai's victory. So he, this is his commandment argument right here. See later on is the message is the message of the message er, from Ephraim. That is the message because by those commandments that's our sin, and by those commandments, if you have true faith, if you've truly repented from your sin, you will now you were slave to these things. All you can do is break them. Now you will keep them, but not be not to gain salvation. You're going to keep them. Much did you hear what he just said? Oh, I heard it. I want people to comprehend what he just said. Watch his watch his face glitch to the side when he before he says this. I'm going to jump back to here. Now you will keep them, but not be, not to gain salvation. You're going to keep them because you realize they brought forth death, and your master died for you, and you're going to now keep. They what? brought forth death. Yes, there's. <laughs> Your master Yeshua died because the sin, the law begot death, but now you're going to keep it because your master died begetting death. That's what he just said. But because you realize they brought forth death, right? That's literally the message that, that you're sharing. The, the law brings forth death. That was all the scriptures that we read from the New Testament. Putting yourself under the law just does brings forth death we got more he of said it. he said just before this not that you're going to be able to gain salvation by doing this all right so just literally hear the words that he's saying and, and hear that it's not it's not a christian message whatsoever this is a judaizer message keep them out of love for what your master did for you so you can't be saved you can't be saved by your by keeping them. But if you have true faith, that you reckon you can't be saved by keeping them. You can't be saved. But if you have true faith, you're going to keep them, right? Recognize the, if you come in fear of your sin, the fear of the penalty of your sin, which is this eternal place of torment made for demons, then you have true faith because you repented of that penalty, the reason for your sin, because of the fear of that. And now you will keep it out of love and obedience because your master asked you to. He said, if you love. <laughs> well, our master is Yahweh Shai. And what were the commandments he gave? There was two of them. We're going to get to that. It wasn't to keep the Ten Commandments or the Sabbath. He had two commands plus an observance that he asked us to, to keep. Let me keep my commandments. So that is the message of the watchman. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak to the house of the Israel. Thus say, speak, if our transgressions and our sins be upon us and we are pining away in them, how shall we live? So you cannot continue your life of sin. You have to repent of your sin, which is breaking the Ten, ten Commandments. <laughs> he just throws that in, which is breaking the Ten Commandments. We're, we're going to get into, in this paragraph that he's in right here, it's... It, we're going to fall apart really bad for Nick. Yeah. Well, he's conflating works with the covenant, right? You're, if you, if you're truly given the spirit of the creator, you will have works to back up that he's inside your heart. You won't leave the poor. You won't say be warmed and filled in your belly. You'll actually feed them and clothe them. Right. And, and repair any damage that's done to them. And this doesn't just mean finding someone beaten up or broken on the side of the road. This means somebody with bad theological, you know, understandings. You come in and you heal them. You show them the three dispensations. You bring the scriptures back in. You feed them. And that's, it says, whatever you're given to, as the apostles went through villages, 
eat what is before you, right? Whatever they come to you, meet them at that level with your scripture knowledge and then feed them more. That's he's conflating that with doing the law, the works of Moses. This is a completely addendum changed covenant. It was new. A new covenant was made, which we got into and we will get into. Yeah, so here's here's where he's going. Ten Commandments and Seven Day Sabbath, which literally is in his about of his YouTube channel. This is pure Judaizing. Here it comes. And turn and the seventh day Sabbath is of the ten, as we will see in the message of the messenger to Ephraim. Say unto them, As I live, saith Yahweh uh, Elohim, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteousness shall not deliver them in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the way that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. So this is this completely destroys once saved, always saved. This is all about living a repentant lifestyle, not people that say, yeah, I'm a Christian and go off and sin. Not people that do those type of things, but there is a sanctification process to no, our lives. We all sin. And as soon as you reject truth, we all sin. Mm. You can't condemn all the Christians just like that. No, that's not the way that it happens. We're in a continual renewing of ourselves. <laughs> the body, all it does is seek to sin. We have to fight it, right? Mm hmm. But he is, he is correct. This really does blow away um, once saved, always saved. It's, it's really in this text here. We should know that once saved, always saved is not a thing because it literally says that the righteous people, if they turn to unrighteousness, they can lose their salvation. And that the wicked, if they quit their wickedness, and become righteous, they can be saved. So yeah, that's what I read. And Peter told them, I realize how true Yahweh is with his favor to everyone who accepts and fears Yahweh and does what is right. Those are his people. We're getting to the good stuff here. As soon as you reject, reject the commandment of the Sabbath day, you are no longer being sanctified in your walk. You're no longer living the spirit. You're lying against the spirit of truth and you're living a, a life of sin. Okay, and that is it. Now, you might be saying, well, Nick, I don't know the calendar yet. I don't have the understanding. Look, I don't draw a separation of the calendar. I publish what is the official Enoch calendar. All right, this is big. It, listen to, I don't draw a separation of the calendar. Let's, let's go back to Nick. I don't know the calendar yet, right? Hear what he says. Nick, I don't know the calendar yet. I don't have the understanding. Look, I don't draw a separation of the calendar. I publish what is the official Enoch calendar that has been restored by other people. I've restored parts of it as well, hallelujah, by the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Okay, I don't take any, uh, I don't boast in that. Okay, uh, but what I do say is that the Sabbath day, whether you understand the Sabbath day to be the, the, the Gregorian Sabbath, Okay, or the Sunday Sabbath. What? Hang on. Yeah, whether it's the Gregorian Sabbath, the Sunday Sabbath, let's get this list here. Okay, whatever your understanding of the Sabbath is, I've proven that it's a solar Sabbath, but whatever your understanding of the Sabbath is. <laughs> a, a solar Sabbath. So that's. <laughs> wow. But whatever your understanding is. That's okay, right? Listen, he's going to say that. You are called to keep it sanctified, holy, set apart. Whatever day. Whatever day you're called to keep it sanctified. Mm -hmm. He's this One leading, of four. Ca <laughs> leading calendar guy. Says there's four different Sabbaths. Do well, as thou wilt. It's good that he didn't boast in it, that's for sure, right? But he did. He literally said, I am the guy that put forth the, the true... Uh, true enoch calendar and so he, he did literally boast about it, it it's it absolutely it's nothing to do with the sabbath that was created for man it's a solar older solar only calendar it's it's not it doesn't tell you sabbaths it doesn't tell you months it doesn't track the moon whatsoever 
I know. Kodesh. That's why Christians were very righteous 100 years ago. A lot of Christians kept the Sabbath. They didn't work on that day. They did all their chores in the little house of the Prairie. They, and Farmer Boy, they did all their chores. He's referencing, mocking, he's he's mocking referencing Little House on the Prairie right now. He's mocking Christians because wow. they were keeping keeping Sabbath. Listen to this. The day before the Sabbath, before Sunday, what they thought. Before Sunday, anybody, anybody that's following along here understands that it can't be a named day of the week. There's 29 or 30 days in the month. So as soon as you reference a name day of the week, you obviously a psyop person. That was the Sabbath. Okay. So like I said, nowadays people will go out to brunch on the Sabbath. They'll go shopping on the Sabbath. They'll watch sports on the Sabbath or do sporting events or do their kids. I'm going to get to this. The I'm going to read a scripture for this. Mm -hmm. Sabbath day, what they understand to be the Sabbath day. And that is a violation of sanctification. That's re willful rejection of Yah's commands. Yet there's four calendars. He, he's not going to tell anybody which the correct one is. Call anybody out for doing it wrong. Mm, I see a problem here. When I shall say to, to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts in his own righteousness and committed iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge. Before we go into this, can can we figure out what we think the pledge is? What if we get a little bit more context? What if we read the next part? Give again that he had robbed. Walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. So if the wicked restore the pledge, super important thing for us to understand what the pledge is. Maybe get a little pre-notion, see where Nick takes it and see if you agree. He restored like four or five fold. Okay, so he kept the Torah, which is the instruction in righteousness. He said he restored four or five fold. And then he says, so he kept the Torah, which is the instruction. Let's listen to this again. This is about Zacchaeus. This with Zacchaeus, who was up in the tree, the tax collector. He restored like four or five fold. Okay, so he kept the Torah, which is the instruction in righteousness. So this is doing righteousness. So beyond just the Ten Commandments, the, the, there are standards of practice in the Torah that are still applicable for life. The sacrificial law has been done away with. But there are still standard, standards of doing righteousness that's found in the Torah. It's instruction for righteousness. If the wicked shall restore the pledge. All right, so the pledge. Let's, let's make sure we understand what the pledge is. And I've got... Here's Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector in Jericho that climbed the sycamore tree. I guess he was short. And Yehoshai called him down. Now, Zacchaeus was a descendant of Abraham. Right? So his name actually meant pure and innocent. Now, because the people were giving Yehoshai a hard time that he was going to go to Zacchaeus's house, he was going to hang out with him. They're, oh, he's a tax collector. It actually turns out that Zacchaeus was completely righteous. Completely righteous. He gave half of all that he had. He was wealthy, but he was a righteous person. He gave half of it to take care of the poor. And then he said that if I had taken advantage of somebody, if I had, you know, done a bad deal, if I had taken advantage of somebody i will repay four or five times what it was that uh, i owe him completely completely righteous this all has to do with a, a person being righteous so if you screwed somebody over in a deal the the way to make it right is to pay him back four times and he offered to do so he gave half of what he had away to, uh, to feed the poor. So once again, like 
he takes it to the law and it's, it's not about the law whatsoever. The, the next sentence is, um, where is it again? It's about being robbed. All right. Give again that he had robbed walk in the statutes of life. His, his distortion of taking this to the law that somehow the pledge means the law is, is complete insanity. This is about being righteous, not the law. Pledge and give again that he had robbed. Again, this is what Zacchaeus did. He pledged that he would return re re uh, fourfold to anyone that accused him of stealing from him. Might have been fivefold, he said, which was beyond. Walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he had committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, the way of Yahweh is not equal. All you Christian crybaby Christians. All you cry. What, what is this? So he does not self-identify as a Christian. He's saying all you crybaby Christians. In fact, whenever he says Christians, he, he like you, you Christians, you Christians. He does not self-identify as a Christian. Very important thing to note. Hey, baby Christians out there that cry against the Torah, cry against the commandments, the Torah, which is, just means the first five books. It's the instruction. The Torah that just means the first five books. You're crying against the first five books. Judaizers are Christians, both Jewish and non-Jewish, who teach that it's necessary for Christians to adopt Jewish laws and customs, especially those Jewish laws and customs which are prescribed by the law of Moses, see the Torah, the first five books. So see also Nicholas James van der Lane. Right. Instruction and righteousness. Okay, it's all about restoring the pledge. Zacchaeus restored the pledge and he got to go to eat with Yeshua. Yeshua knew that you want to come eat with Yeshua when, he, when Yeshua has the rapture, go restore the pledge. Go keep the Torah, Christians. No. Restoring the pledge is giving money back to people that you ripped off, being honest, upright, forth. Come on. That's restoring the pledge, not going back to the law. The pledge, if you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're not going to do something, don't do it. The pledge is keeping your word, being honest. That's restoring the pledge. Come on, but you all cry, are crybaby, crybaby Christians out there. The way of Yahweh is not equal. Oh, the Torah, it's not good. Oh, you're a legalist. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Judaizer, oh, no, not no, legalist. No, <laughs> Judaizer. Judaizer. Baby Christians. There's going to be people crying when, when, when the door is shut. That's all I got to say. You're right but there. I you're 100% correct. There will be people crying when the door is shut. He's right. As for them, their way is not equal. When the righteousness turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if well, listen to the way he's reading this now. All of a sudden, it's die rare. thereby. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. So, this is the warning. The once saved, not always saved. You have to continue to be righteous. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, this is not Torah law. We're talking about restoring the pledge, not screwing people over, not being wicked, not being evil. That is what will save them. But if the wicked turn from their wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say, the way of Yahweh is not equal. Oh, ye house of Israel, I will judge you, everyone, after his ways. It's not, not, that's sobering. Didn't say the, it didn't say the Ten Commandments. It didn't say, mm -hmm. I will judge you on my law, my Ten Commandments. No, it said your ways, your heart, your heart's condition. That's why this person is the Christian prophet. You're going to see. That's why this person is the Christian prophet. He's not identifying with that. He's like saying, oh, that's the Christian prophet. So he doesn't self-identify with it. See, he's the Christian prophet. He's speaking to Christians. 
And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month of the fifth day of the month, that one hath escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, The city is smitten, and that now the hand of Yahweh was upon me in the evening of four he that was escaped came and had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning and my mouth was open and hold I on you know no more there they weren't speaking to christians because christ hadn't done his ministry yet I, I have no idea why he even brought that into ezekiel <laughs> what uh, mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so then this next area i think we can He's going to run some psyop, or he's saying something's fulfilled. By this That's pretty much the end of it. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, these people do claim that they're descendants of Abraham, and uh, they want a peace deal. They're they're doing that. Yes, that's that is taking part. I agreed with him on that. Uh, like I said, I <clears throat> the only places that we disagree is the Judaism, the Judaizing, and a bunch of the other points that you've laid out tonight. What more do you really have to say on on what he said? Because I've got a bunch of retort. That's probably good for now. I know we had a lot, a lot to cover, but uh, yeah, I want, let's, I'll give you the screen share back. Yeah, it's, it's good. Like I completely like that we went through it. Hopefully he's able to correct his ways and, and we can move past the nonsense, right? That's our goal here is to just reprove, show, show the truth. And, and that's it. That's all we ever want to do. So we could jump back into the dietary laws. We continue on here after the last scripture, after Peter was given the vision that everything was clean, he then went on to preach to Gentiles, right? This is the new covenant. It says, eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions for conscience sake. For the earth is Yahweh's, and all that is its fullness, right? So Another scripture, as we continue on here, it says in John 5, 18, for this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling himself <clears throat> Yahweh, his own father, making himself equal with Yahweh, right? This is what the scribes and the Pharisees came and, and said, and we've got, oh, it doesn't look like it's properly set up on the screen. We've got Nick saying that the most important thing is keeping the law, keeping the Sabbath. He's saying that that's the most important thing. Yet we have Yahushai himself, the son, the most anointed, who he said all capital anointed, right? He said Master Yeshua, even though we use the correct Paleo Hebrew name, not the Masoretic vowel point one, Yahushai. So as we can see here, he was he was accused of breaking the covenant, the the law, right? And so if we keep on here. It says in Acts 2.38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yehoshai, Yehoshua's anointed, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we know that there was the first dispensation of the Father. That was Moses who, who carried out that, and, and Joshua preceded him, and so on and so forth. We get to the second dispensation, which is Yehoshai. He worked. First his father hath worked, and now he worked. He plowed the field, set the scriptures. Then there is a dispensation of the Holy Spirit that's given to you. That's what we're, the new covenant. Because we started with Genesis, and I showed everybody how the foretelling of all of this was to take place. Make sure that's on the screen. It says, Matthew 5, 20, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven, right? What Jason and I are talking about, this end times message, is that your heart, the feelings inside you, the way you treat people, your relationship with the Father is what matters. You call upon him for his righteousness. You don't call upon the law of Moses. That was done away with when it was fulfilled. And I can continue on with more scriptures says here, Matthew 5, 48, 3 through 48, it says, love your enemies. You've heard it said, you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy in the law, in the Torah. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? 
If you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So, my main point with this scripture is this was a new covenant that was given. This was, he was literally telling people, Yahushua was saying, you've heard it said, you think this is the right way, but he changed it. That's why we're not under the yoke of the law. It brought death. No one was saved from the law. Continuing on, the fulfillment of the law. Right? This is coming off of Matthew 5.17. Let's read this one. And this says, the fulfillment of the law. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Like I had said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. Then it says here in Moses, or by Moses, I will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. And then it says down here, I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. That's Yahushai. That's what he said. For truly, I tell you, truly, until heaven and earth pass away, not a single jot, not a stroke of a pen will disappear from the law until everything is accomplished, which he accomplished. And we've always told everyone, everything is being recorded all the time. You will have an account for every action in your life. It will walk before you. And if you love the father with all your heart, soul, and mind, he will forgive you for your sins and he will write his law on your heart and you will live that way. And Yahweh answered, is it written? Men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of Yahweh, right? Not just the 10 commandments is our doctrine. Every single word that follows the inspiration, which is uh, the parabolic language that we can use like a signature. You can, people can say, oh, well, that signature was done by the same person because you can actually look at the way that the slashes and the lines are written. The, the parabolic language that was prophesied from the beginning to the end is the parabolic language. And that's how we know that it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And we can continue here. Yahushai, not only did he do all these things, they, you know, healed people and this and that, a Canaanite and a Canaanite woman from that region came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is miserably possessed by a demon, which very well likely could be Nick's problem with his mosaic law keeping. It's a demon that's possessing him. But Yahushai did not answer a word. So his disciples came and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now I want everyone to pay close attention to that statement. Yahweh I said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? And then it goes on to say, but Yahweh did not answer a word. So his disciples came and urged him, send her away. She keeps crying out. And I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him and said, Lord, help me, she said. But Yahweh replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Remember, bread is likened unto scriptures. Yes, Lord, she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. O oh, woman, Yahweh answered, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So not only can Gentiles be saved, but literal Canaanites. Literal Canaanites were given blessings and healings. Not blessings, but miracles happened on Canaanites. And we can continue here. It says in John 5, 1 through 18, Sometime later, Yahweh went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there is a, there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades here. A great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Yahweh saw him laying there and learned that he had been in this condition for such a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? 
Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And Yehoshai said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the man was cured, and he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was also a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath? The law forbids you to carry this, your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick up and walk? And he said, The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Yahushai had slipped away into the crowd that was there. So we really need to drill in here. Again, working on the Sabbath, healing people. Again, the parabolic understanding of the Sabbath that it was set for the thousand year millennial reign, right? It was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. It was a gift. Yahushai created this way for us and he laid it all out in the scriptures, really plain to see. And we can continue on. There, here is your summed up law. Yahushai replied, love your Elohim, your Yahweh, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets, all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So again, I want to repeat. The prophecy was written from Genesis to Moses in Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, that a prophet would come. And if you don't listen to his words, I don't know what to tell you. It says right here, I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. Now we have Yahushua healing people on the Sabbath, showing people the true way, your heart condition. Loving the Father is the first and greatest commandment. I keep telling people when you get up, the Father's prayer is the one that Yahushai also instructed people to say. Okay, we need to listen to the words that Yahushai spoke. We don't need to listen to people like Nick that want to tell you that Ezekiel is coming back and he's going to put the, the law back in order. No, we need to listen to exactly what Yahushai said. And he said the Holy Spirit will be the third dispensation and these children will never see death. Their sins are going to be forgiven. We've been laying it out. We've been finding the correct calendar, the correct date, not with the sun or any nonsensical idea that other men say well, there's four different times. No, there's one. There's one name that was given for salvation. And there was one day given for the Lord's victory meal. And this is what we do. We seek it. We search it. And we let the heart, the, our heart condition is seen for everyone to see. Another interesting parallel to that last bit, when they, Yahushai had walked through and they were eating on the Sabbath day, they were eating the wheat, right? I had read that earlier. But now what we see is, David came to Noab to the priest and the priest came trembling unto David. And he said to him, why are you alone and no one with you? And David said to the priest, the king has charged me with a matter and said to me, no one must know anything of the matter about which I send you and with which I have charged you. I have made an appointment with the young men for such a, such a place. Now then, what have you at hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever is here. And the priest answered David, I have no ordinary bread, only holy bread. Provided that the young men have kept themselves from women. David answered the priest, indeed, women have been kept from us as always when I go on an expedition. The vessels of the young men are holy, even when it is a presence, which is removed from before the Lord and to be replaced with the hot bread on that day, it is taken away. So it went on to say common journey. I missed the line. Uh, how much more today will their vessels be holy? So the priest gave to him the holy bread, for there was no bread there except for the bread of the presence. So remember, David went into a church, went to the priest, the high priest, and asked him for the holy bread, right? So I, I want people to understand that the true law is about feeding the hungry, is about being righteous. It's about holding the door, helping someone who has fallen. These are things that you're going to see in your life that you're going to have that opportunity to walk by or to do something. And every action is being judged. It's all being watched. We need to always remember that 
The Heavenly Father is always with us. When Yahawashai, the rent was torn in the Holy of Holies, he opened the way. The you know, we I like to say he was the uh, Wi-Fi connection to the Father. It was just it was everywhere. Right? And we want to keep the words that Yahawashai gave us. It doesn't take a, a theologian to look at the Bible, to read it, and see that, of course, the most holy one that died, the lamb that took away sin for mankind. If we don't drill in on what he told us to do, I, I really don't think the father is going to reward us in any way. So we can go on about Ezekiel, the law, all these different covenants. But at the end of the day, I think we should spend our time on with what Yahawashai said and did and prophesied and watch for those things to take place. So that's pretty much the conclusion of what I wanted to go through. I wanted to just show people that the whole notion that you can be saved by the law is absolute nonsense. Now, do I think it's a bad thing if someone wants to keep a day a week uh, and pay reverence to the father? I think that's great. But I, I tell you even greater, pay reverence to the father every day. Have him in your life every day that you don't need to have the one day a week because you have every day, every day of the month. Every day of your life, you can dedicate to him. You can do something good once a day or, you know, pray or spend time in meditation. These are things that you see the prophets constantly doing. Yahushai constantly was doing it. You can do it too. Um, these are the types of choices that we're all being given. Uh, we can argue semantics and, you know, theological things. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is that we understand the message of salvation and then that we fight for the truth. And obviously Jason and I have put ourselves in a position where we need to call it everything that's not in the correct path with the father's message. And that's what we do. I don't have any hatred in my heart for Nick I, at all. Like I said, I prayed for him. I, if, if I have any type of uh, power in the spirit, I, I wash him with, with my true love for the father. And that I hope that the demons or whatever possesses anyone to feel they need the yoke of the law. I, I, I pray that that's washed out of them and that they come to the true light. The, the, we're at that time now where, you know, bam, the great tribulation could start. And if people aren't ready, like the, he said, the people without the oil. Nick did say a couple of things that were right. Those that don't love the father, that aren't seeking him, that aren't doing these righteous things, you might, you might have to, you know, suffer more. Do we want to suffer more? I, I don't know. I, I will. Jason will. We, I'm, it's a long rant. I just wanted to let everybody know that Yahushai, in his words, he is the boss. He is the chief musician. He is the first and the last and for everything. He is our everything. He is the only one that is able to have the authority over anything. He was set judge, judge upon all of creation. So we better just understand what he says, not what someone says that their end time Elijah might be. Right. <sighs> Go ahead, Jay. Yeah. So absolutely wonderful i wish we had more time i wish we could have covered more um if i could do a quick screen screen share i um i just want to show the calendar quick before we go and let people know what we're doing schedule wise so we had identified the 13th as being the new moon so that was the first day of the first month. That's right here. That started at sundown, Nick. <sighs> the next thing that we're looking for in the first month, which is Aviv, or it got renamed Nissan, is the 10th day. So 10 days. This is day number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten so the tenth right here is is a significant day it's um it's the day that the passover lamb was to be gotten this is five days five days before passover or yahushai's victory meal so five days before means that this lines up with palm sunday so palm sunday is is the day of the triumphal entry All right so triumphal entry <clears throat> is the 10th it's also when the israelites crossed over into the promised land right they 
cross the Jordan on the 10th. So this is significant. We have triumphal entry day. We have passing over into the promised land. That's the 10th day of the first month. And it just so happens to line up on Earth Day of all things. I find that find that interesting. So you had the beginning of Ramadan on the first day. You have Earth Day lining up with the, you know, this is sunset. Sunset on the 22nd begins the 10th. So what we would like to do is we'd like to be live on this Thursday. So chances are we'll probably be live this Sunday night. But then, I don't know, we'll, I think we'll just go live on Thursday. So we did Tuesday. Now we're going to do Thursday. And then we, we definitely want to be live again on this Tuesday, the 27th. That's the 15th. And that is Yahawashai's victory meal. So while I still have the calendar up, I just want people to see the 15th Passover. 16th is the um, day number one in the tomb. 17th, day number two in the tomb. 18th, day number three in the tomb. 19th. He was gardening. At, <laughs> 19th begins at sundown, but the next day... Well, not the next day, but when the sun was up, right? He was in the garden. Still the 19th, he was in the garden. So Mary that Magdalene lands, that lands on May 2nd, mm -hmm. which is also Orthodox Easter. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, right? Yeah, so that's what we have coming up, everybody. Um, so we're definitely looking forward to this Thursday, the 22nd. Triumphal entry, we're going to be covering that. And then definitely looking forward to the 27th. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. And I think I'm going to do a little bit more study into the parabolic language and uh, show people basically more of what we've been promised, right? And, and you know, shine the light onto it. That's our goal here. Uh, we totally wish and pray with all of our hearts that Yahweh's will be done. That is our sole purpose in life. That's what we were created to do. And every one of you on the other side of the screen, you too were created for the Father's will to be done. And uh, I just thank everyone for being here. Uh, I thank Nick for anything that he's done for the Father and for his support and his search for the truth. We'll see how he responds and where he takes his ministry. We'll be keeping a close eye. We may have to cover this again and again. Uh, just, tonight was just getting our toes wet, just showing you guys the differences between someone that's going to tell you that the law and the Judaizing take place or someone that's going to tell you we hang upon the words of the Father, every single one. So not just the words of Moses. We hang upon all of the words, our foundation. Um, thank you, Jason, for your great presentation and your commenting. I know there was a lot of time that went into those comments and responses and they've became great teaching tools that you've... You've done an excellent job tonight. I hope I did an excellent job with what I shared. I just pray that the Father worked through us and that his will be done, not Jason and Ronnie's or Nick Vanderlane's. We want the Father's will. I can't say that enough. So, uh, Jason, I'll give you the last words and I'll play us out. I'll take the screen share. Yeah, so uh, I do believe that we posterized Ju Judea Judaizers tonight, right? just Judaizing in general got posterized tonight and uh hopefully hopefully it just goes away and is is no longer a thing anymore but we'll we'll stick with it thank you everybody for tuning in go team yahawashai <laughs>